everyone, welcome or welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Emma, and if you're not new here, it's time for another monthly reading wrap up. In today's video, we're gonna be wrapping up all the books I read in July. Now a brief disclaimer, and if you've been watching my other recent videos, you probably have already heard me say this, but I have been in and out of a reading slump, and for some reason in the summer months, this tends to always happen to me, and I'm not really sure why. So if you're a watcher of my TBR videos, you may notice that I think None of these books were on my TBR for the month of July. Maybe one of them was. I've just been trying to let myself mood read because that's really the best way to keep myself out of a slump. But hopefully August will be the month that my slump is finally over. And if you would be interested in seeing what my TBR is for August, I do have that video posted on my channel right now. And I think another reason for the slump is just how busy I've been. I moved into a new apartment, which a bookshelf tour is coming very, very soon. So be on the lookout for that. I went on a friend's back bachelorette trip and then I also just got back from my bachelorette trip and I do have a full vlog of my bachelorette trip up on the page now if you want to go check that out. I'll stop rambling and it's time to get into the six books I read in July and what I thought of them. So first I read volumes three and four in the Heartstopper series. I am absolutely obsessed with these series and these characters. If you don't know what these are, these are graphic novels that follow our main characters Charlie and Nick. This is just the sweetest cutest, most wholesome series I've ever read, but at the same time, it does still deal with some heavier topics, which I think might be part of the reason I feel so connected to these characters. I often say I feel like I actually know these characters, like they are real life people. So it's basically set up sort of like a comic book where it's just dialogue, but there's so much depth and this story is just so heartwarming and heartfelt. And I did read these back to back, so I honestly can't really differentiate the plots of the two. And I did also watch the TV show, which makes it a little bit harder to differentiate them on top of that because the TV show kind of blends the plots in multiple books. But I do know that I gave both of these books four stars. I could not recommend this series more and I initially dove into this because I was looking for something to pull me out of my slump and I knew these would be easy reads. And I'm so thankful that I did and I'm honestly shocked with myself that I didn't read them sooner because I feel like everyone and their mother has already read them and loves them. And even though I gave these four stars, and I think I gave volumes one and two also four stars. To me, the series as a whole is a five star, which doesn't really make any sense, but in my brain it does. Individually, they're all four stars, but as a whole, it's a five star series. And I don't wanna say much about the plot of these two because it would give away things from books one and two, but if you're looking for a sweet, wholesome read that's just gonna give you the butterflies and have you kicking your feet. I could not recommend this series more. The TV show is great as well. The Heartstopper series holds a special place in my heart and I could not recommend these more and I'm really glad I got to both of these in the month of July. I also read The Hotel Nantucket by Elin Ellen. I think it's Ellen Hildebrand. I never know how to say it though. But Ellen Hildebrand is a very well-known author and she's famous for writing these books that all take place in Nantucket. Like I said, this is the first one I've read by her and I didn't really know where to start, but I feel like this is one of her most talked about books. So I figured it would be a good place to start. And I was kind of expecting this to be like a summery cutesy romance and it was not that. This really is more of just a general fiction, but you're following so many characters that honestly at first it was hard to keep up with. And there wasn't really a time I could pinpoint where everything clicked. It was more just like the more I read, the more I started to remember who people were and understand the different storylines. But it's basically centered around this hotel that gets bought by an unknown, very rich man and it follows the lives of the people who are working at the hotel and in a way it also has kind of a mystery aspect because there's all this lore surrounding the hotel about it being haunted this was one of those books where i didn't really feel like i was rooting for any of the characters but i also didn't dislike any of them for the most part it felt very realistic like i was reading about people's real lives but i didn't feel overly connected to any of them in particular at the same time i still did have have a good time reading it. It was entertaining and enjoyable, but I wasn't ever thinking about this book or wondering what was going to happen next when I wasn't in it. I feel like I'm not making any sense, but basically I felt very mid about this book. While I was reading it, I was having a good time. It's not like it was hard to get through. It wasn't slow at all, but when I wasn't reading it, I was never thinking about it. I really did not care 
that much about what was happening with the characters and this was a very character driven story which typically is the type of book I prefer but I just felt like where there were so many characters we were following we never spent enough time on any of them to really feel connected to them and so I think that's why it kind of just lacked for me. I did end up giving this a three star just because I did feel very middle of the road about it but I do lean towards liking it more than disliking it. I don't really think it's a book I'm ever going to think about again, but I'm not mad that I read it. And I do want to try reading some of her other books in the future because I've heard they kind of are a bunch of different genres. Like I think some are romance, just general fiction like this, maybe some mystery, some thriller even. I'm honestly not too sure, but I know she has so many that are potentially interconnected with this. I feel like I've heard that before and I know one of her books has a movie adaptation coming out soon. So I would like to read some of her other books and see how they compare to this and see if I like them more. So if you've read Ellen Hildebrand books, let me know in the comments which one I should read next because there's so many that I don't even know where to go next. This was just a very average book to me. I don't really have anything bad or good to say about it. I then read one of my most anticipated new releases of all of 2024 and that is Reckless by Lauren Roberts. If you don't know, this is the second book in the Powerless trilogy, which is a YA fantasy romance, and I absolutely ate up the first book, like obsessed with it, still think about the first book all the time. I also read the novella and was so excited to go into this. I was expecting this to be a five star, and I'll go ahead and say now that it wasn't. So I really need to stop assuming books are gonna be five stars because I feel like every time I do that, they let me down. But that being said, I can't really call this book a letdown because I still really, really enjoyed it. I just don't think it was what I was hoping it would be. I just kept feeling like it was very repetitive and I don't really think I can put my finger on it, but it just did not give me the same vibes as the first book. That being said, I love Peyton and Kai who are the main characters. All the tropes taking place in this are things I love in books but I don't know what it was reading this. I just didn't get the same feeling from it. I did still enjoy it and I think I actually marked it as a five star read on Goodreads because at the time of finishing it, I gave it a 4.5 star. But now that I've had time to sit on it and think about it, I do feel like really it's more of a four star and me rating it a 4.5 is more just coming from how much I love the characters. But plot wise, it was just slightly a miss for me. And I really don't want it to seem like I'm criticizing this book because I feel like there's plenty of people on the internet that are criticizing this book. I still thought it was done wonderfully. I love how creative Lauren Roberts is with the political system of this. I recently watched the I'll Read But She's Reading podcast where they interview Lauren Roberts and hearing a lot of her insight about what this book is meant to be and why she wrote it the way she did makes me like it a little bit more but it also makes me want to reread it now knowing all of that i guess it makes me want to reread it and have a fresh perspective on it to see if my thoughts would change but yeah i'm not really sure what else to say about it the plot twist at the end i saw coming and i guess this one just felt a little bit more mundane where the first one was go 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 all the time i was hooked this one i wouldn't say i was as hooked but i also didn't find myself wanting to put the book down or anything i was enjoying it so much the banter and the tension in the romance was still great I just don't think it was as good as the first book and I feel like I'm being really picky and hard on this book which I really don't want to do because I gave it a four star clearly I did still enjoy it and I am very excited for the third and final book to come out I just was expecting it to be better and that is mostly my fault for assuming this would be a five star that is nothing against Lauren Roberts I think she writes wonderfully and this world she's built is amazing I love the characters final thoughts are not what I was expecting it to be but still great and I would still recommend this book and the first book and the novella and I'm very much looking forward to this series finishing out. And then the last book I read was Twisted Games by Anna Huang. This is the second book in the Twisted series and I had very mixed feelings about book one. I often hear people say that it's horrible. I did not think it was horrible, I just think it wasn't my taste, but I already owned book two and this was free on Audible so I decided to listen to it and I enjoyed this one significantly more. I ended up giving this a four star and this is like an adult contemporary romance. A lot of people classify it as dark romance, I wouldn't necessarily say it is, but it's not like your Abby Jimenez, Emily Henry, it's definitely a lot spicier and 
intense, but I don't know that I could call it a dark romance. This book follows Bridget and Reese Larson. Bridget is a European princess and Reese is her bodyguard and that's kind of the premise of it. I really really enjoyed the dynamic between these two characters and unlike the first Twisted book, I actually felt like they had chemistry so I cared about what was happening with them more and I think my four star rating comes more from being surprised with how much I liked it and not actually how good the writing is. This is definitely just like like your simple smutty palette cleanser romance book very easy to get through but very entertaining the writing in this is not like a masterpiece or anything but it is very fun to read and i enjoyed these two characters so 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 much my only complaint is that the timeline of it felt really drawn out almost like they were trying to make it a slow burn but i didn't really get that slow burn feel from it if that makes sense is it my favorite book in the world no but was i pleasantly surprised by it Yes, I don't know if I would recommend this series. I have, at the time of me filming this, read the third book in the series, but I didn't read it in July, so that's why it's not in this recap. And I often hear people say the third one is their favorite one, but I liked this a lot more than the third one. The third one to me was very similar to the first one, where they just were kind of meh to me. This one I actually cared about the characters and as I always say I am a character driven reader so if I can care about the characters and feel the chemistry between them I'm probably gonna like the book a lot more and I do think I'm gonna finish out the series just to see what it's all about. I've definitely read romances that are a lot better but I did not hate this one by any means. It's quick, easy, entertaining, fun. If you're looking for a good palate cleanser romance I would recommend this series but if that's not what you're looking for I wouldn't tell you to go out of your way to read this. Those are all the books I read in the month of July. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And also let me know in the comments what you want to see me read next. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd want to see more videos like this. And you can also go ahead and check out all the other videos up on my page currently. And I've also linked my Instagram, TikTok, and Goodreads in the description below if you'd be interested in following me over there. That's all for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.